Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode 36 of the Rickenbacker 62012 string build. And we're actually getting very close now. I think with a few days work, we should be in the finishing booth with this one. But before we can do that, we need to make sure that everything is gonna work properly. So it's time again to do another trial build. And what we can also do is just make sure that we can wind this bridge down sufficiently to get a kind of a working action. Just make sure that everything fits and that there is absolutely zero kind of refit work to do once we've got some finish on this. The last thing you want to be doing is messing about changing stuff with a freshly sprayed finish because your chances of messing it up are exponentially higher than if you didn't. And you might also think, well, you've already done a, a couple of trial builds, but we have changed things since then. We've added the bridge, etc. So you never know, that could have had an impact. So first up, we'll get some pickups in and then we will crack on with the rest of the build. Now I don't think there's any need to go into too much detail on this because you've seen this before a couple of times. Okay, so that's the pickups in. I've instantly found out that I think I need slightly longer screws. These are kind of, they're not going into the body far enough for my liking. So that could be a kind of a weak point on the build if I don't amend that. This bridge obviously needs notching. So the strings are moving around a little bit, but we'll have to do that once we get it kind of finally put together. But I just want to just see if I can kind of drop this bridge down a bit because it's sitting way up in the air. Let's see if we can kind of get a ballpark workable action. Bearing in mind, I've got a temporary nut made of a bit of rosewood, which I already know is sitting way too high. And that's pretty much bottomed out. And that is way lower than I would ever envisage setting my action. So that all works well. We're not, we're nowhere near the pickups. So that's not going to create a problem either. So as far as that's concerned, yeah, happy days. So we'll just carry on now and get the rest of the hardware put onto it and see what we end up with. Okay, just put this little jack plate in. Now I've done a little work on these and I've actually spaced out these sockets on the back with a nut and a washer on each one, just so I haven't got that piece of threaded socket sticking way out here as it was before. So I think that looks a lot better. And it's always these little kind of small details that you fix up as you go along that make the difference. However it is, depending on which way these sockets are oriented, can make it a little bit difficult to get it into the, into the holes. There, I think that's done it. I might even cut that central bit out just to give it a little bit more wriggle room. I don't know. And now we'll move on to the other end and get the rest of the tuners fitted. Okay, so that's pretty much everything on the guitar now. And just out of curiosity more than anything, I've, I've put it on a strap just to see how much impact all of those tuners have on it being neck heavy. And I'm really pleased to say it isn't at all. It hangs really, really nicely. So that's good. Happy days as far as that's concerned. The only thing I haven't put on are the bushings for the tuners because 
I just feel the less they go in and out, the lower your chances of actually messing up the headstock veneer are. So I've left those out, but they'll fit. I'm pretty confident. They've been in before. There shouldn't be an issue there. So with that done, I think that's looking rather splendiferous. Quite happy with that. So I'll get this to pieces and we can crack on with the next stage. So what comes next is sanding. Lots and lots of sanding. I'm gonna break this down into sections. So I'll have the top of the body, the back of the body, the rim of the body and the neck and finally the headstock. So what I'll do is I will, and I've done this already, I'm gonna start at 180 grit. So I've got some 180 grit on my block. I've got some 180 grit on my sander. And then I've got a loose pad just for doing detail work and little bits and pieces. I'll go through every section at that grit and then I'll swap out my grits. I'll go up to 240 grit do everything again with 240, 320. And having done that, we can move on to grain filler. I mean, luckily on this build, the only bit that's really gonna need grain filling, I think, are these mahogany wings on the back of the body. I think the rest of it is mainly maple with a little bit of purple heart. I've never painted purple heart before, so I don't know if the lacquer's gonna sink into it, but looking at it, it looks very close grain, so I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so I'm going to start with the rim of the body at 180 and then I'll work my way through the rest of it. I probably won't film all of this because it's going to take hours and it's going to be quite boring to watch, but you'll get the gist of it as we go through. demonstration of what these little finishing touches can be like on these builds. You might just be able to see there that binding. It's a little bit on the loose side, just a tiny little bit. So I'm going to try and get my scalpel in there. Get a little bit of acetone down. Just hold that in place with a bit of masking tape. And we'll just leave that to set up while we go about sanding the neck.
Okay, so that is everything now sanded down to 320 and it's all feeling absolutely beautiful and smooth. So next up is we'll take some of this Aquacoat grain filler. Um, it's a water-based clear grain filler, so it's kind of pretty much multi-purpose stuff. I've used this on a number of builds as regular viewers will be aware and it's always kind of worked out really, really well for me. It's not cheap. This was about 30 odd quid for this tub. But if you look, I've done about three or four builds with this now and I've hardly scraped the surface. So hopefully it should last me a good long time. And it's just a matter of kind of pushing it into the grain. I'm trying to leave as little excess as possible just so I don't have to do loads and loads of sanding but what I'll do is I'll let this first coat dry sand any excess off and then just kind of give it a few more coats just to make sure we've got everything I found if you try and do this in one go it will kind of shrink back. So you'll still be left with the grain pattern. Once you put your finish on. And there it is, that's the first coat on. As you can see, it's kind of drying already. It is quite warm in the workshop today, so that shouldn't take too long at all to dry. And then we can give it a quick flashback with a bit of fine sandpaper and go for a second coat. And I've actually left this overnight to dry out. I got dragged into something else yesterday afternoon. So this has had a good long time to dry out now. And it's dried out beautifully, but it is a little bit kind of rough to the feel. So we're just gonna go over it again with a bit of 320 and you don't need to do a lot just take off that slightly rough feel so I'll continue to do that get all the edges done, all the little round o's and everything. And then I'll proceed to put another one or two coats of the aqua coat on, rub that all down, make it all beautiful, give the whole thing another check over to make sure that it's exactly how we want it. And then we're gonna be ready for spraying. However, I'm gonna leave that till the next episode. So as always, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot for watching, bye bye.